What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're back with more T-Mobile Bianchi and today some of my personal favourite races of the year, the Arzen Classics, are coming up today. So like I said, the Arden Classics, but Amstel Gold, actually not in the Arden region of Belgium, obviously, but we include it in this type of race because La Flesh and LBL also follow very hilly races. I cannot wait for these. Let's take a look at our squad. Leading our Arden Classics lineup, we have Maxi Shackman, Marco Brenner and Alessandro Covey alongside Gianni Moscon as well. But Matt Shackman, probably our main leader. Also Kevin Vermarker is an option. We also bring the Shark Vincenzo Nibali alongside Jonas Vrić. And looking at the favourites for Amstel, Shackman is here as a favourite, but Wout van Aert and Van Der Poel are going to be the big favourites. We have Hershey, Ala, Philippe, Sagansu, all the big hitters are here. So some guys join the early breakaway, including Stefan Kung here in Amstel. We don't get the best race days, to be fair. Kovi, though, on a really good day and could be an option because he does have a good sprint on him nowadays. Oh my word, I was about to say an uneventful addition so far of Amstel Gold, but Kovi and Brenner both fall at the same time. What a disaster. We've got Stannard and Quieto down here as well. So some big, big riders have fallen. Let's sit up with the likes of Nibley and Vermarka. But luckily, to be fair, Kobe is able to get back in alongside Brenner pretty easily without spending too much energy. So 70k to go. The race has settled down just a little bit. Still though, the early four riders are up the roads in that breakaway. Vermarka is going to try and relay on the front for us now too. So in an effort to try and open up this race just a little bit, I have put Nibley, Rich and Vermarka to the front here to really try and press on, make it difficult for Shackman and Covey, who are definitely our two big leaders today. So Rutsch is now cooked for the day. We have Covey, Shackman and Moscon who needs to get back up and help Covey. That's my bad uh, for not protecting with Moscon right there. Should be okay though. Brenner now trying to make it difficult. 33k to go. And suddenly we're down to 25 riders at the very front of this race. Ulysses, the world champ, is working for Yui Mahoric to the back here. We have Madoa too. Alaphilippe is here. Of course, 6k to go until the revered Kalberg. Moscon can probably pull on the front whilst these guys just sit in for now. So we have 19k to go in this year's edition of the Amstel Gold Race. The Kalberg is now approaching for sure. And you know what? I think we have to make this as difficult as we can. Young Gulls is here. Where is Alaphilippe? Surely we're going to see moves by the likes of Van Der Poel here. Where is Shackman? He's been caught a little off the wheel, but there goes Van Der Poel. Let's sit in his wheel with Kovey if we can. They're trying to stretch away here um, from this group, but luckily Kovey is able to stay here. Shackman can probably work for Kovey, you know, or vice versa. Let's see, we do have both these guys who will be our two leaders, but 14k to go. Still, we have over 30 in the group. All right, and this time we do have a move to Espenut. We have Wout van Aert as well. Kovey, try and follow Wout van Aert. Benut, not the punchiest rider, to be fair. Not the biggest acceleration, which does mean we're able to stay with him on that occasion. But there goes Sagan. Let's get in the wheel. This time of Delgado or Alaphilippe or someone like that. 10k to go. This is really set to be some kind of sprint. But I have now followed Van Der Poel with Shackman. I definitely want to cover off, uh, of course, Matthew Van Der Poel if we can. Kovi is on the wheel of Julian Alaphilippe. So two good options we have marked out here for sure with Kovi and Shackman marking Van Der Poel and Alaphilippe. Only 7.5k to go though. And this time we have Wout van Aert attacking away. Let's try and follow Sagan with Alessandro Kovi. Though Wout van Aert isn't able to stretch a gap. There goes Matthew Van Der Poel. We have to try and follow that here with Maxi Shackman if we can get to Matthew Van Der Poel's wheel. Oh my word, it's so, so difficult. So, so difficult here. Let's try and get to his wheel as well with Kovi. But Shackman is really struggling. And Matthew Van Der Poel is so, so strong. As we know, 4K to go. Quinn Simmons is doing his best, but Kovey is struggling too. Let's follow Peter Sagan with Kovey. We have Matthew Van Der Poel, who has a slender lead. But what an attack that is right there by Van Der Poel. He is going to win this year's Amstel Gold Race, that's for sure. Kovey can maybe try an attack to, in an attempt to get a podium position here. Alaphilippe tries to follow too. Let's follow Julian Alaphilippe. Kovey is going to be done, but I'm pretty sure Matthew Van Der Poel wins the Amstel Gold Race this season. We'll try and hold on for third place with Kovey. A good result for him behind Julian Alaphilippe, but nothing we could do about Van Der Poel there. To be fair, it's not the worst today. Alaphilippe and Van Der Poel. When you see these guys, it's a good result for Alessandro Kovey. Hopefully, though, 
we have better things to come in the odds end. La Flesh and LBL up next. Same team today for us for La Flesh this year. Alaphilippe, Hershey, Delgado. They're the big favourites. We still have Wout for not here. No Matthew Vanderpool from what I can see, but Pagacha also rides. I mean, look at this man. He is un. Believable, that is for sure. Our squad remains unchanged, and I can tell you that Shackman and Covey have both had their fitness peaks in the last few days. Away we go, then, guys, for the flesh, and Shackman gets an all important plus two day. Covey again on a great day. We have options, but this is always going to be decided on the murder hoy, so probably Shackman is our best shout today. We also get our first Remco Evenepoel sizing this season. The man has been injured. He joins Alaphilippe and Almeida in a stats to Koenig team here. So 30k to go. We now enter the murder hoy for the penultimate climb. Next time we're here, it will be for the race finale and our guys are struggling just to stay in position. Sorry if you can hear some whistling winds in the background. Big storm currently outside my house, unlike right here for our guys. Look at the rhythm being set on the Mur. Oh my. And right now we do have only 18k to go. Still 80 riders at the front. Kovey has struggled despite his great attributes here to stay in a good position throughout. Shackman looks great and we have just such a hard tempo at the front right now. We need to make sure we're staying in position but we're not going to try any attacks. We are waiting for the final murder hoy. Okay and we have seen Mark Hershey open up an attack here. Mike Woods is able to follow. I've got for Marker and Covey relaying at the front. Shackman can sit on the wheel, stay calm on the wheel of uh, Gianni Moscon, but Woods and Hershey being very aggressive, especially Mark Hershey, who has kicked away from Woods ahead of the murder hoy. He could be, uh, he could definitely be costing his chances here. But Marker and Covey have literally given their all in this descent, meaning the gap to Hershey is about 15 seconds. We now need to stay here on the wheel of Gianni Moscon. We have to Mulan here. Strange to see him at a race, but Hershey's still ahead. Moscon isn't going to kick away. Here goes Alaphilippe. Got to as well. Let's try and follow here. We need to with Moscon and Shackman. There goes Delgado. There goes Hershey. Has he spent all his energy though? We're doing our best. Davide Formolo is here as well. And we have a very small group here as well. Van Aert. 20 riders at the front of La Flesh. No one has been able to create a massive gap though. Only 3k to go. There goes Alaphilippe. There goes Godzu ahead of the Murder Hoy. Boy oh boy, that is such aggressive racing from Alaphilippe. He could probably win this on the Murder Hoy, so I'm not quite sure what he is doing right there, but here we go. 1.7k to go. Let's go up to 99 with Moss gone. We have Shackman sat on the wheel. We're in a great position. 1k to go. There goes Alaphilippe. Moss gone doing great. Here comes Shackman. Let's go up to 99. Maybe sprints over the top of the climb. Has Alaphilippe taken it? Here comes Shackman. It's only going to be a podium place. And what a comeback by Mark Hershey, who wins ahead of Alaphilippe on the murder hoy. Shackman only third. Bit disappointing. Second third of the episode with Pickcock and Godzu in the top five today. I mean, to be fair, when either Hershey or Alaphilippe are on form like that, they are pretty much impossible to stop on the murder hoy. The best puncher always wins here. So Shackman, third place. We can't be too disappointed there for sure. Good prep ahead of LBL. And by the way, in the gap between the races, Giulio Ciccone has won the Tour of the Alps. I simulated the race, but Ciccone looks great ahead of the Giro d'Italia. Here we go then, guys. Liège, Baston Liège. It looks like we have the older finish, the uphill finish today. So interesting stuff. Alaphilippe, Van Der Poel, Hershey, they're all here. You can see all the guys that are the favourites. Pogaccia to the real-life winner this season. We have a similar team, an identical team to the previous two races today. Let's see what we can do. Let's go for a monument. Away we go then for Liège, Baston Liège. And I must say, Gianni Moscon on a very nice plus four. Shackman too gets plus two. So things you love to see. Jonas Rich, I think, could be an option to go in today's breakaway. Let's try and kick away. He's on a good day. Not the best punchiest rider naturally, but on a good day, despite feeling a little ill, apparently. So we'll put him up the road here, see what he can do. So it will be a small six-man group up the road in today's breakaway. We have Amasqueta, Sleen, De Boist, Marissa, Narsen, and Jonas Rutsch up the road. So a fairly good group, to be fair. They have four and a half minutes. Okay, an unideal moment here as uh, Kevin Vermarker has fallen early on. You can see a few guys behind. Julian Alaphilippe is behind with Adam Yates as well in that group. These guys are going to sit up and we could well see an increased rhythm 
at the front of the race. And we have Facebook Trek kick on here. Boy, oh boy, this could be a big, big moment. Here we go then. The catch is just about made. Okay, but Alaphilippe, Hershey, those guys, they would have had their hearts in their mouths for a little bit. Let's get for marker back to the front of this group. Okay, so this is where the final 105k, this is exactly where this race is going to be decided. Plenty of hills and like I said, an uphill finish into on, I think it is today so let's just try and take position whilst rich is up the road conserve energy and of course watch for any attacks but the number of fools we have seen today is causing absolute mayhem roman Bardet goes down simon yates is here too i'm not sure who else is here but we've had plenty of riders naro quintana letnison's is here volta they've all fallen early on here not big big favorites for this type of terrain but definitely going to have an effect on the race. So I'm not too familiar with this climb, but it is absurdly steep. Look at this, up the roads in the breakaway, Rutsch struggling to stay here at 87 effort. We won't try anything again whilst Rutsch is up the road, but try and conserve energy, going to be so important for later on. So the breakaway enter the Col de Rosier, 60k to go. They still have a two minute lead to be fair, on the peloton behind. We still have all our riders here. Nibley struggling a bit, but still no major attacks today. We have a pretty big set of domestiques still hanging around working for their leaders and we're going to stay sat in because of that basically. The Col de Rosier has definitely caused some big big gaps to form. To be fair Jonas Rutsch is starting to struggle now in this breakaway. He won't pull if he's caught by the peloton so be it and he can help out our leaders because Vincenzo is gone now for the day. 68 are now here after the Col de Rosier. Okay so Nibali is now gone. Rutsch has been caught perfectly timed to be fair. He can now protect Gianni Moscon who is feeling so so good today feeling good about our chances here as we come into the final 45k Celine has gone he's dropped Marissa and Du Bois and it's probably time for us to really make this difficult race all right so here we go guys Covey and Vermarker can protect Shackman and Gianni Moscon we now approach the Col de la Redoute of course this is infamous a really revered climb known for its presence in Liège Baston Liège let's try and stay to the front here Brenner and Rutsch are going to try and really press on on the front protect against any attacks let's make this really difficult and that effort has seen the likes of Banal Bookman out the back we now have 31 at the very front 45 now and we need to be careful because I'm expecting attacks anytime now but instead Rob Stannard continues to make this really really difficult now for Bora Hansgrower working for their leaders let's stay in position we're looking pretty good there goes the world champion Diego Ulysses Mollerman and Toons they're done for Facebook Trek, we only have a limited number of opportunities to really try anything at this stage. Now we enter the foot of the Cote de la Roche au Faucons. Of course, this is a massive climb as well. Stannard still able to work on the front for Bora Hansgrohe. Let's stay right to the front here. You can see this is so, so difficult. Oh my word, look at the rhythm. Still so many riders able to stay in this group for Mark and Kobe trying to stay to the front, but look at Stannard still on the front. Jackman and Moscon are here. We still look okay. 27 riders are at the front now and Stannard is still there somehow. And I'm waiting to see how the Domestiques react here. And now we have a move. Now we have a move. It's Mark Hershey who has attacked away right there. Shackman can probably sit on the wheels of these guys. I'm trying to follow with Gianni Moscon. Unable to though. We can't react to Hershey. We can't follow him straight away. So let's sit in the wheels now. Work with Moscon for a little bit. Still 22 riders are here. And Hershey just up the road ahead. But Mike Woods is able to bring him in just about. Or is he? Hershey just off the front apparently still. There you go then. Hershey is caught. All the favourites seem to be here. Roglic. We have Pogaccia. And the pace does slow a little in the descent. Now we have Quinn Simmons working for Facebook Trek. Only a couple of climbs remaining. Going to be very difficult to try and get away here. So I think we may as well work for Shackman with Gianni Moscon. Let's just try and keep him to the front on the Italian's wheel. So let's see, Quinn Simmons leading this group. Gianni Moscon doing a good ride for now. We have Millard, Stano, Pagaccia all here as we come to the penultimate climb today. As I mentioned, let's try and work for Maxi Shackman. Try and protect against any attacks, but there goes 
Mark Hershey tries to get away, but Gianni is able to react right there. Is he going to try again? I think he is. I think he is. Let's try and follow Mark Hershey then with Maxi Shackman. Let's try and stick on the Swiss wheel. And we have been able to. Shackman and Hershey have gone. They have a lead. Gianni is sat behind. Oh boy, this could be a big moment for us. Big, big moment for us for sure. Let's sit on Hershey's wheel still as he tries to attack away. We're doing a pretty good job of that. Only 3k to go. So 3k to go. Shackman is following Mark Hershey, but he's a very very, very good descender. We are marking him out. Moscon, try and follow these guys behind as well. But they are going to catch the guys at the front of the race. There goes Vanderpool. It's an Amstel moment right here. Oh, my word. This is so, so difficult. Shackman trying to get in the wheel of Vanderpool. Let's try and sprint. We're not going to win it, are we? Here comes Shackman versus Alaphilippe versus Delgado. But Julian Alaphilippe is going to win LBL. It's so disappointing. Alaphilippe takes the win. Delgado second. Shackman a close third. Oh, I thought we had it for a moment. Oh, guys, I tried so hard. I really did. I thought when we followed Hershey with Shackman, we've made the winning move and we could sit on Hershey, try and attack him in the final. But Alaphilippe, those guys, they attacked from behind. Elgado, the new gen from Spain as well. Would have liked to maybe utilise Moscon a little better, perhaps. Not quite sure how we could have done that. Maybe tried an earlier attack with Gianni. But in the end, we settled for our third third place of the episode. So looking at the calendar, guys, we do have Romandy. I still haven't decided if we're going to play this race or if we're going to cut straight to the Giro d'Italia for the next episode. One thing for sure, you'll find out there. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled because Giro is coming very, very shortly. And following the Classics campaign there, no surprise to see Wout van Aert van Poel atop the Super Prestige standings. But the Grand Tours to come, we still have four riders in the top 10. Shackman, our best rider so far this season. And in the World Tour, Super Prestige, we are dominating the standing. So things you really enjoy seeing. But of course, the Giro is coming, guys. Here is our planned squad. We have Ghana, Nizzolo, who's still injured, but will make it back in time for the Giro. We have Kemna, the defending champion, of course, at the Giro. Ciccone is there. Nibali too with Biska, Marda and Gio Aliotti. So we're going for our second GC win in the Giro in a row. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode once again. If you did, give me a big like button down below. Make sure you let me know what you thought in the comments below and drop a sub on the channel as well if you're new. I'll see you guys in the next one.